Hi, Chris here. Uh, and today we're going to be having a good look at this uh, Roba uh, safety deposit box lock. Uh, disc detainer design. Quite an unusual lock, I think. Uh, I've um, done a bit of research and haven't actually managed to find any evidence that it's uh, it's been picked before. Um, although it, uh, it may well have been. Um, when I got this, I was expecting it to be uh, quite similar to the much more common Rosengren safety deposit box lock, um, but it, uh, it, it does have some, uh, some important differences, um, both of which make it a, a bit harder to pick, actually, um, or potentially a bit harder to pick, I should say. Uh, first one is size. It is small. Um, by way of comparison, that's what it looks like uh, next to the Rosengrens. Um, the keyway is, is only about a millimetre wide, slightly over a millimetre, so uh, access is, is very restricted. Um, Size-wise, perhaps a better comparison is, is this uh, Abloy Classic cam lock. You see similar sort of size, maybe a little bit bigger on diameter, but with, of course, a very different, uh, very different key design. Um, the other uh, important or interesting feature of it is that there's a there's a shroud uh, inside here which uh, blocks access to the discs quite effectively. Uh, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll give you a good tour of the internals of the lock, show you how that works, uh, show you how we can get around it, uh, and then there is a, a pick and gut at the end of the video. So I've taken the uh, the internals out. Um, put to a device here, uh, and you can see uh, we've got uh, we've got eight discs. These are the discs. Um, you've got the shroud here, and then there's two uh, extra discs at the end, which which uh, sort of key into the shroud and and, and turn with it. Um, you can see how small everything is here. Uh, these discs are about half a millimeter thick uh, for scale. This uh, this pick that I'm poking them around with. 23 thou pick um, so it's a it's about the same thickness as a sort of standard a standard pick uh, spacer washers about the same um, and what that means is uh, for picking these um, basically you've got a one and a half millimeter window for, for each disc um, before you interfere with another disc you've got the uh, two washers um, and uh, and the disc itself so uh, not a lot of space to work in um, just uh, by way of comparison um, i've taken a, a disc out of neighbors plus core abus 88 um, and you can see uh, how uh, how substantial that is uh, compared to uh, compared to one of these robo discs So the discs themselves uh, look like this. You've got this sort of internal uh, internal teeth, which uh, different radii on the key will will interact with. Uh, they've all got one fairly large uh, true gate, uh, square sides, uh, and then um, they've all got two false gates as well. Uh, the, these are quite small, um, but uh, and and. The sidebar won't actually fully uh, drop into them, but really what they do is they, they catch um, rather than um, uh, rather than letting the sidebar drop in. So it becomes very difficult then to turn the disc, uh, and that's important when it comes to picking. Actually, you, you can you can tell when you drop into a false gate because it sort of it sort of there's like a soft pop as it goes in, um, whereas with the uh, the false gates. Uh, the disc just locks as you're turning it without the pop, um, which does let you identify it. Uh, it. It is quite tricky to to get it out of the uh, to get it out of the false gate, though. It, it does it does catch nicely on the sides of the sidebar. Sidebar looks like this. It's a uh, it's a, a rectangular section. See that there, sort of rounded rectangle on top. Um, but then it's it's had a flat cut on, on the bottom. You might just about be able to see that here. There you go. Just get the light on it. Um, and uh, what that means is, firstly, you've got some, some very square corners for the, 
uh, for the gates to catch on. Um, but also it means that in, unless the shroud is is properly uh, positioned, uh, the uh, the sidebar won't engage with the discs. So you you can you can only uh, you can only engage in picking if the shroud is is fully rotated. And that's where the shroud comes in. That's sort of the crux of this lock, really, um, in that it does very effectively cover uh, most of the internal profile of the gates, much more so than you'd see on a Rosengren's. Uh, you've just got a slot in the side, essentially, for the key to fit in, and any other bit of the uh, any other bit of the internal uh, profile of the disc is is protected by the shroud. You've also got these these ribs on the side. Um, they turn the discs back to the to the zero position or the locked uh, locked up position, um, but they also mean you've got no chance really of getting round onto the onto the other side of the discs to uh, turn them uh, anti clockwise. Um, this this gap is 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 small using using the pick for scale again. Uh, basically, it's a, a you know three quarters of a millimeter, something like that. So really uh, not much space to play with. Okay, so I've taken most of the discs out here. I've still got the two at the back, uh, which support the shroud and, and rotate with it. Uh, don't need picking. And you can see that if you, uh, if you turn the shroud. And I've just left the last disc in. Um, so uh, if, we, if we turn all of this as far as it will go clockwise, um, to, to tension the lock and, and get the sidebar to bind on the discs. Um, what you'll, you'll see is that the, the hole down the side of the shroud, um, which is the, your only access to the disc, actually presents um, access only to this surface of revolution on the inside of the disc, so you haven't even got anything to pick at. Uh, no means of turning the disc. Now, the, the vulnerability that I've exploited is that uh, all of the discs are turned a little bit by the key. Um, if I just take the shroud out, I can I can show you this. There you see that the key uh, the key sticks out of the shroud at, at, uh, for every disc location, um, at, at least on one side or the other. And what that means is that every disc does turn a bit. Uh, so if I pop that shroud back in there, um, what, what that means is you, you don't have to start with all of the discs at their um, locked up zero position. Uh, so what, what you'll see me do in a, in a second uh, when I pick it is actually um, turn everything so it all moves now that disc isn't necessarily set but it's it is at least off the stops uh, and then i use the shroud to turn everything back again and then put tension on the shroud like that and now what you see is that if you go down through the slot in the side of the shroud you have access to these shoulders uh, on the inside of the disc um, so the, the tool I'm using is is, uh, is this very simple thing. Uh, basically, it's a it's a dimple flag, um, but I've uh, I've made this from a piece of, of one millimeter wire, uh, bent around the corner, and then I've filed it flat. So uh, I've not got a round surface on there. I've at least got um, a one millimeter flat surface to push on the discs, and depending where the where the, uh, the gates are, I've got a, a two stage push, so, so this is quite, quite tricky. Uh, you can go down, um, work, work that onto that shoulder there, turn the disc, uh, and then when you run out of rotation, you can actually then just go a little bit deeper, pick up on the next shoulder. And continue to turn it and you see I've turned that all the way to the stop now so you do have uh, 
have full range of movement um, on every disc. It is it is difficult to navigate through. The discs are very small. Um, you, you've got quite a small uh, quite a small gap. Um, you know these are only uh, half a millimeter thick. Um, so staying on the discs is is tricky. It's also tricky transferring from one shoulder to the next. Um, but uh, uh, with a bit of practice, it is possible. Okay, so here we have the lock. See the key working completely normally. See that tailpiece moving there, I hope. Uh, so we'll start with paper rotating everything. And then use the shroud to bring it back to the max cut position. Just line that uh, pen mark up with the keyway. And then a bit of tension on the shroud. We'll get the, uh, the pick in there. So it's disc two set, leaving disc three alone. Just trying to get onto disc four at the moment. Disc four. There's five. Disc eight just forced it out of a forced gate. I don't think it's set. <gasps> no, it is. And that is pegged. it without it leaving frame.
the back. Lock it up again. And that just drops out of there. Sidebar, I'll have another look at that in a minute. Take the shroud off and then into the disc stack. Disc. Washer. Disc. two special discs at the bottom. Okay. Like that. There we go. There's the uh, plastic housing, the shroud. Let's just have a look inside the, uh, uh, the housing of the lock. You can see the uh, the groove there in the side that the uh, sidebar runs in. Here's the here's the sidebar. I'll just uh, I'll bring the tray up to the camera uh, close up on the discs. There you go. So. Uh, there you have it, uh, Roma disc detainer safe deposit uh, box lock picked and gutted. Okay, there we go. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, do, do leave a comment if uh, you've got any other information on this lock. I'd be particularly interested in knowing whether uh, anyone's ever picked one before. Um, one uh, final note that I, I should say for full disclosure. Uh, that was a very heavily rehearsed pick uh, with full knowledge of the internals of the lock uh, and I'd, I'd practiced that uh, in a sort of progressive pinning style working out exactly what I had to do for each disc uh, as I went through. Uh, so that isn't really representative of uh, picking one of these in the wild and I think if I was presented with one of these uh, without the key and with no means of taking it apart uh, I, uh, I would not be able to pick it. Uh, I think it probably is possible for someone with enough skill, but uh, um, I'm not there yet. So um, take that for what it is. Um, some people would say that isn't a legitimate pick, but uh, um, I think uh, if, uh, if I'm honest about what I've done, then uh, it doesn't matter too much. Anyway, um, let me know what you think.